I have a lot of stuff I want to just read to you this morning, and hopefully this will help you. And then I'll tell you why I wanted to just read it to you. Um, when I read it, it was good reading for me. And so I'd like to share it with you. And I know some of you, you know, some of you have been traumatized by the church. You don't like you don't like to go to church and somebody read the Bible to you. But I want to do this for a minute. Proverbs chapter 3, 1 through uh, 12 first. And I just want you to listen, relax, and listen. You can have your Bible, but make sure you listen to this. How to acquire wisdom. My child, do not forget my teaching. Let your heart keep my principles, since they will increase your length of days, your years of life, and your well-being. Let faithful love and constancy never leave you. Tie them round your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Thus you will find favor and success in the sight of God and of people. Trust wholeheartedly in Yahweh. Put no faith in your own perception. Acknowledge him in every course you take, and he will see that your paths are smooth. Do not con congratulate yourself on your own wisdom. Fear Yahweh and turn your back on evil, health giving this to your body, relief to your bones. Honor Yahweh with what goods you have and with the first fruits of all your produce. Then your barns will be filled with corn, your vats overflowing with new wine. My child, do not scorn correction from Yahweh. Do not resent his reproof, for Yahweh reproves those he loves as a father of the child whom he loves. Thank you, Coach. Give it back to Robert. Um, the, the love thing, when you forgive, will you let your resentment go? You will have love, and that's all you will operate in. Uh, the giving thing, I'm sure most of you already give, right? You donate and stuff like that. But the thing that I wanted to uh, point out is that I noticed that most people don't like to be corrected. You really just hate it when someone correct you. And as long as you feel that way about it, you're never going to be free. Because the only reason you hate it is because it's true. All right? And somehow or another, you got to find that place in life where and let's say that someone is correcting you and what they're saying is not true about you. You still have to learn not to be angry about that. Not to be angry about it. Uh, because when you can't accept correction, when God allows you to see yourself, your wrong self, you're not going to want to see that either because there is nothing good in you. You're no good through and through, right? And so when... God, you say, oh, Lord, let me see myself right. And he let you see it. Then you get mad at God because you don't want to see that, because you hate correction. And a whole lot of people, they love you until you tell them the truth about themselves. And I don't understand that. I mean, I do understand. That's the ego that hate and correct. And that's the nature of Satan uh, wanting to be God. And Satan, you cannot correct Satan. And that's what the problem is. And those who hate correction, you are the sons and daughter of Satan. Isn't that right? Why are y'all looking so crazy there? <laughs> I'm like, wow. Okay. Now, this is a long one. This is, um, this is, this is a New Jerusalem Bible. I like this one better than I like the other one. Uh, because it's plainer, I think. Uh, here we go. I want you to read the life of the Spirit. This is Roman 8, 1 through 30. The Christian spiritual life. Uh, the life of the Spirit. Thus, condemnation will never come to those who are in Christ Jesus, because the law of the Spirit, which gives life in Christ Jesus, has set you free from the law of sin and death. What the law could not do because of the weakness of human nature, God did, sending his own son in the same human nature as any sinner to be a sacrifice for sin and condemning sin in that human nature. This was so the law requirements might be fu fully satisfied, satisfied in us as we direct our lives, not by our natural inclinations, but by the spirit. 
Those who are living by their natural inclinations have their minds on the things human nature desires. Those who live in the spirit have their minds on spiritual things. And human nature has nothing to look forward to but death, while the spirit looks forward to life and peace. Because the outlook of disordered human nature is opposed to God, since it, since it does not submit to God's law. And indeed, it cannot. And, lo, and those who live by their natural inclinations can never be pleasing to God. You, however, live not by your natural inc inclinations, but by the Spirit, since the Spirit of God has made a home in you. Indeed, anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But when Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is alive because you have been justified. And if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from, from the dead has made his home in you, then he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies through his Spirit living in you. So then, my brothers, we have no obligation to human nature to be dominated by it. If you do live in that way, you are doomed to die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the habits originating in the body, you will have life. Children of God. All who are guided by the Spirit of God are sons of God's. For, for what you received was not the spirit of sa slavery to bring you back into fear. You receive the spirit of adoption, enabling us to cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself joins with our spirit to bear witness that we are children of God. And if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, provided that we share his suffering so as to share his glory. Glory is our destiny. In my estimation, all that we suffer in the present time is nothing in comparison with the glory which is destined to be disclosed for us. For the whole creation is waiting with eagerness for the children of God to be revealed. It was not for its own purposes that creation had frustration imposed on it, but for the purpose of purposes of him who imposed it with the intention that the whole creation itself might be freed from its slavery to corruption and brought into the same glorious freedom as, children of God, as the children of God. We are well aware that the whole creation until this time has been groaning in labor pains. And not only that, we too have the fr who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we are groaning inside ourselves waiting with eager, eagerness for our bodies to be set free. In hope, we already have salvation. In hope, not visibly present, or we should not be hoping. Nobody goes on hoping for something which he can already see. But having this hope for what we cannot yet see, we are able to wait for it with persevering confidence. And as well as this, the Spirit too comes to help us with our weaknesses. For when, for when we do not know how to pray properly, then the Spirit personally makes our petitions for us in groans that, that cannot be put into words. And he who can see into all hearts knows what the Spirit mean, means because the prayer that the Spirit makes for God's holy people are always in accordance with the mind of God. God has called us to share his glory. We are well aware that God works with those who love him, those who have been called in accordance with his purpose, and turns everything to their good. He decided beforehand who were the ones destined to be molded to the pattern of his son, so that he should be the eldest of many brothers. It was those so destined that he called, those that he called he justified, and those that he has justified he is brought to glory. Feedback from that. Right Did you there. people already know that? Christ is our brother. The one thing about seeing him as your brother, it allows you to know that you can live the way he lived. And even greater works here you do because you don't have him as your God. He is your brother. God is our God. 
And uh, the same thing that he did, the way he lived, we can live that way too, and even better, because we have the Holy Spirit inside of us to guide us. But some people have put him as God, and you never can reach, you know, you can't be God, but you can definitely have a brother yeah, Christ and be like him. It's very unfortunate that, that, that most of Christianity is deceived that way. Yes. It's very deceived. It really, really is. It really, really is. Christ made it possible that all may be free if they are willing to be free. You know, through him, we can all be born again or be saved from sin. So, and yes, there are those who will not accept that, of course, so I don't know what he mean by that. There are some people he has set aside, God has set aside to do a special job, you know. They have a special calling on them. And, and, and that is for those people to point the right way back to God. But we all can be free uh, if we want to. The chosen ones are the ones to help those who are lost to find their way. It doesn't mean the chosen one are the only one that's set aside to go to heaven. If everyone wants, they can be good people and they can have that perfect peace, right? If they want to admit that they are wrong and that they are not God so that they can find the right way, yes. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. God's chosen people, who knows who they are? Are you? Am I? Who, who knows that? Nobody knows that. You can recognize it when you see it. Yeah, you can't just recognize as, when you see it. Well, some people will recognize it and others won't. Just like when Christ was walking around, some people recognized who he was, others didn't. You already have the opportunity to be saved. Christ came that all may be saved. Oh, see? So, but chosen, he chooses people to do his mission, to carry out work for him. Oh, I see. He's like, he is like hiring oh, someone. I see. That's what you mean by chosen, yes. I, I hope. Because God already knows who will accept him and he won't. He knows everything. So he knows that there are some knuckleheads out there that would never accept him. And also another question. He knows so everything. A child that's been born in a Muslim family that will probably never get the chance to know Christ, that's right? That's a good that question. That child has, doesn't have, it's not chosen, we can tell. A child that's been in every generation, I don't, it doesn't matter what religion they're tied up in or whatever, somebody in there knows something's wrong with what's going on because God is with them. They, they may be a monster group, but they don't quite fit in. They may be a part of it, born into that mess, but they know that there is something that's not right. I've been a Christian all my life, I think. Well, I think I became a Christian at 15, but yet I knew I really wasn't a Christian, even though I had said it and was, you know, acting like it a little bit. I knew that I wasn't born again yet because I was still sinning. I still had anger. I had conflict. Even though I had, at 15, had said I believed in God, right? But nothing changed. And so even though I lost everybody that was carrying on as though they had changed, I still knew I had not. And so that's how it is in every group, every family, every group. It doesn't, doesn't matter that it's the Muslim world. That's why you see a lot of, there are Muslims who are leaving that religion because they've always known that there was something wrong with it. God is with us. You don't have to worry about that. And they don't have to hear the, the word from the Bible. It's in their heart. They have a, a, the, the, a conscience, which is the mind of God. And he's like there protecting them, letting them know, just waiting on that moment so he can free them up. But a lot of people think you've got to go out and just preach the Bible around the world. If not, the people are not going to know the truth. That's not true. It's in us. It's, it's in us already. That makes sense? Yeah.